Hi everyone, my name is Tim and today we're going to set up a NTP server on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. This is a fairly straightforward and simple process and the good thing about RHEL 6 and NTP is that NTP is installed by default on the basic server. I have the desktop package inst installed so NTP was already installed um, uh, right out of the box for me. Okay, so these are my, uh, my steps. What we're going to do is edit the configuration file, start the service, enable the service during the boot up, configure the firewall, and verify synchronization between the servers. Okay, so before we get started, I'd like you to check out this application. Go to System, Administration, Date and Time. Now please take a note of this. This box is not checked off, which is for synchronized date and time over the network. Okay, so just take a note of that and we'll come back to this later. And let's begin. The first thing that we want to do is vim into etsy ntp.com. Okay, and I'm going to show you the line numbering and line 18 right here. We want to uncomment out that line, and basically, oh, I messed up here. What we want to do is add in your uh, network ID. My network ID is 192.168.10.0. Okay, and I'm going to use the default restriction options, right? Restriction options right here, which is the no modify and the no trap option. So what this is saying is that any workstation or any server that comes from this subnet will be given the no modify and no trap restriction, and that's perfectly fine for an NTP client. And right here you see that these are our NTP servers, which our NTP server is going to use to to get an accurate time from. Okay, so let's save this and now let's start the NTP service. Very good. Let's ensure that NTP is started during the boot up. Okay, very good. And now the tricky part NTP uses UDP port 123, so we need to open up this port on our server. And the way we we'll do this is by using IP tables. So the command is IP tables dash I input dash P for port which is UDP dash dash D port for destination port which is 123 and we're going to accept the packets that come through there. That's it. And we'll type IP tables dash L and you'll see right here on the first line that UDP packets going to the NTP port uh, are allowed. Okay, very good. And now let's save this service IP tables save. And that's it. Okay. Now we need to make sure that there's synchronization between our server and another reliable NTP server right now. So the way we go by doing that is using this command ntpq space dash p enter and you'll see three servers right here. So what is happening is that our server is polling these systems to find out if they are a reliable time server. And this takes about five minutes. So synchronization doesn't happen automatically, but it gives but you need to give it some time so that it can work its algorithms and say, you know what, after five minutes I think that you are a reliable time server and I'm gonna start syncing my time with yours. Okay? So I'm going to pause the video right now and I'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Okay, and we're back. It's been about five minutes, so let me clear up the screen and let me type in that command again: ntpq space dash p. And look, something interesting has happened. Okay, we see that there is now a star next to the system, the private.ss l119. I'm not sure where it is, but basically what this is saying is that our server is now syncing with this server. So this is our authoritative server. Okay. Another thing is that you see that there are two plus signs here, okay? So what this means is that these two servers have been deemed worthy candidates for synchronization. They are not being, our server is not syncing with them right now, but if something ever happens to this system, these two systems can be used for synchronization for an accurate time. Pretty cool, okay. So if you remember in the beginning, we went to system, administration we went to date and time and you see now that date and time this is checked off and this 
box which says synchronized data and time over the network. All right. So basically, this is a an application for setting up an NTP client. Now we didn't set this up, but when we started the NTP service, um, we did start up the NTP client as well. So because I'm sorry. So before our NTP server became an NTP server, it first became an NTP client, and this application is just a reflection of that. Okay, so let me cancel out of this. So this concludes our demonstration. I do thank you for your time. I hope that this video has been of some help to you. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.